Okay, y'all. Welcome, welcome. We are going to start this video. I'm going to kick it right off by telling you I have a picture of Marilyn Monroe right here. So if you see me looking in that direction, just come looking at her for reference. So I'm just finishing priming my face. I went in with the Set Behold Set and, uh, Set and Prime Misting Spray, Matte Primer Misting Spray. So I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the makeup. Um, I will, if you have any questions, otherwise I will leave a comment of everything I use. So let's get right into it and start talking about Miss Monroe. So Marilyn Monroe was born Norma Jean Mortensen on Ju June 1st, 1926. And she was born in Los Angeles, California to Gladys Pearl Baker and Edward, I want to say it was Edward Mortensen. Yeah, Edward Mortensen. And they were only married for two years. And in that time, that's when Marilyn was born. Marilyn grew up mainly in Los Angeles. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just looking at her picture to make sure I'm doing this right. So she was born in Los Angeles, grew up in Los Angeles. And because her mother was going through a lot, and by the way, mine broke, just so you know. So I'm like pulling this off. Um, she spent a lot of her childhood in foster care, living with family, and in the orphanage. In 1928, Gladys Baker, so Marilyn's mother, and from this point forward, I will just refer to Marilyn as Marilyn and not Norma, just so you know. Gladys, her mother, she was unable to care for her children. And this was financially and mentally. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia and spent most of Marilyn's life in and out of foster homes. So it said that Monroe's childhood, she, it, she was stable, she was happy, she was a very happy child. But in 1928, um, Gladys deemed her, herself, deemed herself unable to care for Monroe. And so Gladys put her into the Evangelical Christian Foster Parents home. And they, she was in place with Albert and Ida Bolander in the rural town of Hawthorne, California. She lived there for six months and then she was moved, was forced to move back into the city for work. Hold on, I gotta fix this. Okay, there we go. Oh shit, that was a lot. Okay, it's fine. Oh, gosh darn it, I knew that was gonna happen. There we go. Um, that's a lot. So I'm going to blend this out with a beauty blender. Hold on. Crap. It's fine. It's fine. I'll just wash my brush. Okay, back to Marilyn. So, um, Marilyn, for the next four years, lived on and off with foster families and in the orphanage. She spent a little bit of time with her mother, but her mother eventually was just committed into a psychiatric, psychiatric hospital. Um, so for 16 months, she continued to live with the Atticus, Atticusins. Um, who was a family friend of theirs and it's not quite clear Re of sources I found plus other sources like they're kind of going back and forth but it said that while she was living there she was sexually abused now during this time so I'm just trying to blend this out really quick and it sounds weird if I talk like that during this time um, Marilyn developed a severe stutter 
and it is blamed on her abuse and so that's what we're gonna go with I'm not sure if that's true or not but I would say so in September 1935 she uh Grace Atticuson who was her the family friend put Marilyn back into a um orphanage until she legally adopted Marilyn in 1936 but she left Marilyn Monroe in the orphanage until 1937 so she then moved back in with the Mortensons and um Grace and her husband at first everything was going well until in 1937 about Four months later, after they pulled her out of the orphanage, she was sent back because Doc had molested her. So then she lived a brief time with some family, uh, some family, and then some friends of her family and friends of Grace in Los Angeles and in Compton. So it was more, it was more, um, it was said that these experiences is what made Marilyn decide that she wanted to become an actor and spread positivity. She says, and I quote, I didn't like the world around me because it was kind of grim and kind of sad. When I heard that this was acting, I said, that's what I want to be. So in 1938, Monroe finally found her more permanent home living with Grace's aunt, Anna Lauer. And this was in Sawtell, California. She was enrolled in Emerson Junior High School and she went to a weekly Christian science service with Anna. It was said that in her schooling, Monroe was considered just to be like a mediocre student. She didn't really excel. One thing she did find herself selling in, herself excelling, excelling in, oh my good God, English, was that of literature and writing and so she spent a good portion of her high school career as a writer in 1941 at the age of 16 Marilyn Monroe living with Anna met James Daughtry now James Daughtry was a 20, 21 year old son of one of their neighbors and Anna was being forced to move and so she was going to be sending Marilyn back into the foster home and so in order for that not to happen James and Marilyn got married at this time James was working as a factory worker in the night shift and Marilyn was still in school Marilyn immediately after marrying James at the age of 16 dropped out of high school high school and became a stay-at-home wife and in 1943 it is said that she publicly announced and this was a big deal at the time that she hated being a stay-at-home wife because it bored her to tears and she loved James but she hated the fact that she had to stay home in 1944 um, James Daughtry who was in the Navy was shipped out to the South Pacific and this was you know after Pearl Harbor and still during World War II and he would actually remain out in the Pacific for two more years during this time Marilyn Monroe moved in with her in-laws and she was working at a radio plane company where a Navy um, or excuse me an Air Force photographer first noticed her and took an interest in her beauty. He helped her in 1945 to get a contract with the Blue Book Modeling Agency. And this spiraled into her fame. This is what spiraled her into fame, I should say, sorry. Um, she, excuse me, then took a contract with 21st Century Fox and um it was told that when she signed this contract with fox that they said 
in order for her to have this contract and do this job that she had to be unwed. And so she promptly divorced Daughtry in 1946. He continued to follow her career all the way up to her death. Um, so the, the modeling agency deemed her more suitable as like a pinup girl than like fashion model. And that really, really, really like broke Marilyn Monroe's self-esteem and kind of set it forth to for her pictured look. She promptly dyed her hair blonde and straightened it. She became one of the most ambitious and hardworking models. And by 1946, she had already appeared in 33 magazine covers. So she was on the cover of Pageant Magazine, US Camera, Laugh and Peak. And so as a model, Marilyn kind of stuck with being Marilyn Monroe, but sometimes she'd go under the name Jean Norman. So then in 1946, she signed a contract with an acting agency and she had an interview with Paramount Pictures, which was unsuccessful. And so then she was given a screen test by Ben Loy, a 20th Century Fox executive. And they just, they didn't like her acting and they told her if she wanted to be an actor, she'd have to go back to acting school and take some acting classes. Finally, in 19, August of 1946, she signed a contract with 20th Century Fox. And when she signed the contract, this is her first time signing any contract. She signed it under the pseudonym of Marilyn Monroe. So, a little backstory on why she became Marilyn Monroe. Monroe, Marilyn's name was picked by the owner and executive of 20th Century Fox. And he said that he liked the name and she reminded him of the Broadway star Marilyn Miller. And then Monroe was her mother's maiden name. So Marilyn Monroe. In September of 1946, she legally what had divorced Daughtry. And she um, went on to pursue her career without him. And he did state that she, he 100% in an interview after her death, he stated 100% that he was against her career. And that's the one reason they ended up divorced. So Monroe spent the, her first six months with Fox in acting classes and acting school, which the executives had told her she needed. And she had to learn to act, sing, and dance if she wanted to make it. And so that's what she did. Her contract was renewed in February 1947 and she was given her first film roles in things like Dangerous Years, Scooter, Hot Scooter Hay, um, and then she also was enrolled in actor like theater which was um, acting classes for theater theatrical work. I cannot talk and put white in my waterline. Okay. Monroe, her, she was, Marilyn, she was very, very, very determined to make it as an actor. And so she dedicated her life to the theater and to acting. Um, so she had a small role in the play Glamour would Prefer, and this was, um, just a small play that was being held in a small theater in Los Angeles, but this only lasted two to three performances. To the network, she, um, to the network, this was against her contract, and so she had to decide what she wanted to do. Once she decided that she wanted to be a film actress, she stuck to that and she went back to Fox. While working with Fox, she befriended um, Sydney Sklosky, who was a gossip columnist. 
for um, a small paper in Los Angeles. And it was said during this time that she was constantly, and this was um, what Sydney was writing in her columns. She was constantly, that's dirty. Gosh, darn it. Here we go. Here's a clean blending brush. She constantly was um, entertaining influential male studio workers privately. And this is what she was doing on the side to make money, extra money. In 1948, just two years after she got into acting, she signed a contract with Columbia Pictures and she, she completely changed her identity and her look to look like Rita Hay Hayworth who was a famous um, model and actor at the time. So she completely bleached her hair platinum blonde. And then she started working with that, with Columbia's head drama coach. Sorry, I'm looking at her picture. Make sure I'm doing uh, Natasha Lind, who would remain her mentor all the way up until 1955, which is her longest contract. And just deepening this eye look. The only film that she actually filmed or was filmed in and was in was Ladies of the Chorus. And this was a low budget film that came out in 1948. And she was just a chorus girl. Who ended up being courted by a, a, like a wealthy man. And so it was like a no, no name part. And Marilyn did not like this. Um, she also did audition for a lead role in Born Yesterday, but so that was supposed to come out in 1947 or 1950. Yeah, 1950. But her contract was not renewed at the end of 1948. And so she did not get that part. I, my screen fell asleep again. So in 1949, after her contract had ended with Columbia, Monroe returned again to modeling, and this is where she felt her happiest. I am looking for my black eyeliner, there it is. This is where she felt her happiest and most confident. We're going to wing it out, she had a small wing. Sorry, I cannot talk and wing it out. They're like sisters, not twins, again. That's okay, though. It's okay. So back to the story. So she shot a commercial for Pabst Beer. And this is probably actually one of her most famous commercials, actually. And posed in artistic nudes for John Burgat. Y'all know I can't pronounce English words. Burgas um, calendar using the name Mona Monroe. So again, she was using a pseudonym. Mon uh, Marilyn, she had previously posed topless or in like bikinis for other artists such as Ed Moran um, and many, many more. I can't, I'm drawing a blank. And so it was said that she actually felt more comfortable in the nude than she did with actual clothing on. Um, so shortly after leaving Columbia, she met and became the protege of Johnny Hyde. And this was the vice president of William Morris Agency. our little beauty mark right here this is such a simple look because we don't need it okay 
Um, so in 1952, we're going to skip all the way to 1952. She found herself in the center of a major scandal. And she was revealed to be publicly nude in the calendar in 1949. The studio had learned about these photos and she was publicly rumored to be the model some weeks prior and together with Monroe they decided to prevent any damage to her, to her career that it was best for them to admit that while stressing that she hadn't broke it at the time she um so what happened is she hadn't signed with this agency and so she wasn't part of it at the time and that was the only way they felt that she would be able to save her career Sorry, I cannot apply mascara and talk at the same time. So she only does like a half lash on mascara. Okay. So, um, she then was uh, in a box office smash hit and that was the talk of Hollywood and then a cheesecake queen so then that same year three of Marilyn's films clashed by night don't bother to knock and we're not married were released and they boomed they were capitalized and they were on the pub like on the public's mind what am I doing I need blush so despite her newfound popularity and she was being talked about as a sex symbol Marilyn also wished to showcase more of her acting and so she began taking more acting classes with Michael Chavok and a mime named Latte Gosler and because of this Clash by Night and Don't Bother to Knock just showcased all her different newfound acting school skills in the former drama starring Barbara Steinwick so don't bother to knock she played a fish canary worker a fish cannery worker oh my good lord and she spent time so to do that role she actually spent time in a fish cannery in monterey bay um monroe's other three films in 1952 were continued to typecast and were typecasted as comedic roles and they highlighted her sex appeal. In 1953, Monroe was a rising star. She was very, very popular with the public. And very very popular I cannot find my bronzer there it is with Jane Russell Jane Russell was actually a lifelong high school friend to Monroe's first husband James Daughtry and she was introduced to Monroe by Daughtry they played together in a Broadway version of um, Gentlemen prefer blondes and then in 1950 1940 Wait, hold on. I Lost my train of thought in 1953. She played bomb blonde shell bombshell and she was cast as her first major role and lead in bomb blonde shell blonde bombshell so as part of this film's publicity campaign Russell and Monroe pressed their hands and four footprints in white country outside um, the Groman's Chinese theater and then um, because of this the other movie Gentlemen's Prefer Blonde where Russell was the lead actress became the box office major hit and it was one of the biggest successes of the year she then performed in a movie called Diamonds Are Girl's Best Friend and she demonstrated the ability to sex a song like be sexy while singing a song 
and to point up the eye's value of a scene by her presence. And the um, fox agreed. Fox was like, yes, 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 do it all. And so she did. In September, Monroe made her very first television appearance in the Jack Benny show. And she played Jack's fantasy woman in the episode called Honolulu Trip. And she was a co-star for Betty Garble and Lauren Bacall in that same year's million dollar movie called How to Marry a Millionaire. And this movie was released in November. So Monroe, Marilyn, she played a whole bunch of different parts. And in this film, How to Marry a Millionaire, she was some naive model who ends up teaming up with the other two actresses. And they find rich husbands. So in 1953, 1954, Monroe was listed in the annual top 10 money making stars. And she was listed as number four and number five each year. The, um, in 1952, she was on the center of and in the cover of Playboy. And unfortunately, it is said that she did not consent to this at all. She did not want to be in Playboy. And it's, it was a feature of one of her 1949 nude um, pictures from the calendar. So in 1954... Marilyn had become one of 20th century's biggest stars. Hold on, I cannot talk. Uh. This is so vel velvety. Set her face and then I can continue. So, um, in she was being paid far less than any of her co stars, and she was making more films, doing more acting, get, like all of it, and she was getting paid far less. And so, under pressure by the studio's owner they should focus exclusively on entertainment to maximize profits and production instead of like any serious films. And Marilyn was suspended because she was not deemed able to produce a serious, not a non-serious role. So this became like front page news. Marilyn um, was in this big heated conflict with 20th century and, um, this brought her into the eyes of Joe Mia De DiMaggio, and she and him were married on January 14th in 1954. They took their honeymoon to Japan, and instead of being like some romantic trip, it actually was just a business trip for DiMaggio. In April of 1954, this... Um, the last film ever filmed of Monroe was River of No Return, and this was her last acting job. And she called it a Z-grade cowboy, cowboy movie. She was not happy with it. She, it just, it wasn't what she wanted, and it just wasn't what she want, you know, what she was happy with. She didn't like the role, none of it. So, um, they were trying to publicly advocate for this role and get her into it, get the public into it. And so this is where the classic picture of her standing in a white dress 
on Lexington Avenue and the wind is blowing up and she's like holding her dress down. That's where this comes in and this was taking, taken in June of 1955 and has become one of the most famous pictures and biggest commercial successes of the, of the year and to this day. Um, we are almost done y'all. So she founded MMP and Monroe moved to Manhattan, New York and spent 1955 that entire year in New York on Broadway studying acting and she went to, she took classes everywhere and attended Broadway workshops and did everything. So in 1955 Monroe was still married to DiMaggio and unfortunately they decided that it was not working. He did not agree with her acting and her public nudity and that picture and so they got a divorce and she was dating Arthur Miller at this time while they were still married and while she was publicly having this affair DiMaggio was having an affair with somebody else and so they got divorced in 1955 and shortly after Arthur Miller married Monroe. And during this whole time, 20th Century Fox was begging Marilyn to come back. For some reason, I don't like how that this eye looks. I'm gonna fix it. It does not quite look like Marilyn. It's just, her eye look is so simple, so it shouldn't be that hard to recreate, right? Okay, back to, so on June 29th, Marilyn and Arthur, Arthur were married and they moved back to White Plains, or they didn't move back to, they moved into an apartment in White Plains, New York. And in two, two days later after their marriage, on July, June 30th, or July 1st, July 1st, my bad. They had a Jewish ceremony because Miller was Jewish. At the home of Kay Brown. And he was Miller's, Arthur's literary agent and a good friend. So due to this, they converted Marilyn Monroe to Judaism where she happily and faithfully studied the religion. Okay. Um, despite the fact that she was a sex symbol, um, But this created an uproar with the public, stating that the two were mismatched and it was never going to work out. She was too in the... What is that, y'all? What is that? It's fine. I'm, it's fine. I'm going to take it off anyway. That she was too in the public and he was too laid back. So Monroe, she decided to return to Hollywood, just ignore this side of my face, okay, in 1958, and she wanted to go back to acting, and so she acted opposite of John, Jack Lennon and Tony Cur Cur um, Curtis, but she never went, returned to film. It was all TV and, oh, duh, it was all like TV roles, and so... She was never back into Hollywood limelight. Just trying to cover some of that red. So she started 
to have a decline in her career starting in 1960 and during this time she became really 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 heavy into drugs and pills um she was always absent from the set and she actually started having an ex an an affair with Yves Montanand um and this was brought to the public's attention and became like a giant scandal. Um, so in 1962, Marilyn Monroe, she had lost everything. Um, her career had tanked. She had no husband and she was still he heavily addicted to pain pills and other drugs. And on, um, in, let's see, I want to say it was in August 1962, one of Marilyn's neighbors woke up kind of startled and just had that feeling that something wasn't right with Marilyn. And so she, she saw that Marilyn's bedroom window was, light was on. In the bed, in her bedroom window, saw that her light was on and that Marilyn was still awake. And so then Monroe, the neighbor, she, not Monroe, Murray called Marilyn's psych psychiatrist who arrived shortly after to, um, it was probably about 5.30 a.m. and found her in her bed, not alive. So they, um, at 4.25 a.m., they pronounced her dead. Or that was her time of death and that was pronounced by the LAPD so they're not quite sure they pronounced her dead at 4 25 a.m. or like that's when she they thought she died but speculation is she died in anywhere between 8 30 p.m. and 10 30 p.m. on August 4th and um so they did a big autopsy on her and her toxicology report came back and her cause of death was acute barbiture poisoning or um or poisoning and she had eight milligrams of chloral 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 hydrate and numb, numb, uh, and 4.5 milligrams of numbutal 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 in her blood um and these were all prescribed medications to her so she um, didn't accidentally overdose. That was rolled out immediately because the doses found her body were like way over like the lethal limit. And so um, due to these facts and the fact and like the fact that there was no sign of a break in, there was no sign of a struggle. No one wanted to kill Marilyn. They um, they classified her death as a suicide and Monroe her death Marilyn's death was like a big shock wave across the nation including Europe um, according to Lois Banner it said that the suicide rate in Los Angeles is doubled the month after she died the circulation rate of most newspapers expanded that month and the Chicago Tribune reported they had received hundreds of phone calls from members of the public requesting information about her death and this was all within hours and weeks of her death. I just realized I did not do my brows so I'm going to quickly do my brows. Um, so her funeral was held was held gosh darn it I need that picture back her funeral was held at the Westwood Memorial Park August 8th and it was a private affair only closest associates and her family were allowed to be there and I thought so I always thought that the funeral was arranged by Arthur Miller her latest husband but it wasn't, it was actually arranged by Joe DiMaggio and Monroe's um, half-sister, Bernice Baker Miracle. 
and hundreds of people lined the streets to see her coffin and to see her laid to rest. She was later entombed in the crypt number 24 in, um, in Los Angeles. So um, kind of just like a side note and then I'll be done. There have been hundreds, if not thousands of conspir com conspiracy theories um, about her death. Um, some saying that she was murdered um, just because she had gained public not um, notice from um, because of the Arthur Miller scandal and the affair that she was having while married to Arthur Miller. Um, I, so there's been a book written about this conspiracy theory, but like no hardcore evidence to actually prove that this was the case. And still to this day, her death was ruled as a, a suicide. So drop in the comments what y'all think. Do y'all think that she killed herself? Or do you think that it was foul play? So let me know in the comments what y'all think. And this is the final Marilyn Monroe look. Thank you for sitting here with me for an hour listening to me ramble on and stare at a screen because I could not get her picture like perfect um I will see you guys probably Thursday with a new look if you guys are interested in like a series like this where I sit down and I tell you guys like a true crime or a mystery or anything like even just like a murder story I can like I mentioned in my life previously I do have a bachelor's in criminal history and like World War II history specifically so I can do that if you guys would like I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off this half of my makeup and do my makeup for just like a normal day because I do not like red lipstick on me and I don't need this. And I will talk to you guys Thursday. Let me know what y'all think. Bye guys.